<clears throat> so my good friend Heath Barr from North Carolina um, called me up and we spoke for like 50 minutes. Um, so unlike the previous videos where there's just one second in between, like literally one second in between recording each video, um, there was about an hour <laughs> between this one. Um, uh, but I watched a little snippet of um, the last one um, that I haven't even uploaded yet to realize where I was at. Um, so it was it was a philosophy teacher that actually introduced me to the church fathers or like introduced me to the concept that they existed, you know. Now, this was, he was a Catholic, he actually went to, his parents said that he could go to any college, they would pay for any college for him to go to, if as long as he'd go to a Christian college. So he's like, hell, it's the late 60s, um, I'm, I, he, he's like, I'm picking, and he, he picked a college that was in Southern California, it was a Christian college, he said, I didn't care there was a Christian college, you know. But Southern California, late sixties, hell yeah! And she's he's like, I was only going there so I could live in, in um, you know, in Southern California in the late sixties, <clears throat> which is, I think anybody would do that, you know, had they lived there if they get a free ride, hell yeah. Um, but he wound, he said, you know, it, you know, after you read the church, the early church fathers, and you study Christianity, you only have two choices. He goes. And that's the Roman Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox Church, which sometimes people refer to the Eastern Orthodox Church as just Greek Orthodoxy. I I, I don't like that, and I don't think many Orthodox like that um, because the Greeks are a certain um, are a certain uh, patriarchate or yeah under underneath the, uh, the broader Eastern Orthodox, but it's also the way that it's designated from Roman Catholic, you know, I mean, technically, I think the Church of Russia is called the Greek Orthodox Church of Russia. Whatever, not important. Okay, that um, local church, what if their local church is Catholic or Protestant instead of Orthodox? What led them to have a very different views to you about accurate of the Bible, whether heaven and hell is literal, as you discussed in the previous two videos. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta say, um, the, uh, looking at the, uh, how the Bible w w came about, um, how the ancient Christians worshiped, where the authority comes from, and that this, like, the idea of a Bible-based church blows my mind. Now, again, sorry for the contact lenses. Um, I get the, I mean, from, from having read Bart Ehrman, I still believe he thinks that, you know, the church is bi based on the Bible, or, or should be, you know, um, which, and you can get some of that feeling from some of the church fathers, not the very early ones, but, you know, later on. Uh, but the idea of a Bible-based church just blows my mind. And that's that's something, um, especially some of the towns that I've lived in, um, you know, outside of Chicagoland area, they, they brag about that. This is Bible-based church. How? Like, <laughs> the church wrote, edited, and compiled the Bible. It, it pre-existed the Bible. How could you base a church on the Bible. The Bible is, at least the New Testament, is most certainly based on the church. It's the other way around. Um, it's almost like you're playing make-believe. It's just weird. Um, my point is that Alex has studied far more than the average person. He may, he may have. I, I, I don't know him. Um, did he leave more than one comment? Um, Again, I've, I've been interacting with you so much that I may have mixed up with another person or, okay. And you're implying that 
that isn't enough for his opinions to be justified. Um, how then is the average person supposed to arrive at the correct decision about religion when they do not have enough time to dedicate to rigorous study? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that this all stems from the very unfair reaction that I had to him, you know, of like, well, you need to, you need to read and study more, you know. I usually when, again, when somebody flashes their credentials of like, yeah, I went to Oxford, or I went to Harvard, or I went to this or that, usually that kind of puts me off. It's like, you're, you know, somebody who never went to school, could, you know, who, who just studied on their own, never went to, I never went to school, never attended college, and, and studied on their own, um, can actually have a better argument and a clearer view than somebody that, you know, went to an Ivy League school. Now, going to an Ivy League school definitely doesn't hurt. Um, but I know for a fact, you know, and anybody who's been to college knows for a fact that there are certain teachers that they will teach you their ideology despite how narrow it is in the field that they're talking about. Like uh, Mary Jean Cravens, um, she, like sociology to her, like, like I, I was like, wait, so it's just the, it's just making gross overgeneralizations and then, you know, seeing how they play out, but it's just because how Americanized and, you know, liberal and progressive she was where it was like like to in her mind like she was an anti-racist right and feminist but you know all black people were poor and not educated and violent but it's not their fault and don't you dare call them uneducated or violent like but everything that she talked about them was them being poor and violent and uneducated like it was very disgusting and it wasn't until I actually had a, a different sociology class with this, this French lady that I was like, oh, oh my God, like it's, that's not it. Like why I took two sociology classes, don't ask me. It's not as if there was a hot girl in both classes. Well, I do know why. It's because I was taking the same classes as one of my friends and he was in sociology. So I got the full dose of all the weird feminism. Uh, no, yeah, again, that stems from kind of a shitty argument. Um, comment that I made earlier um but again when it comes to something like uh religion I think you should be lifelong studying um I was just talking to Heath Bar about the her name's Heather I call her Heath Bar um uh I got my ma a book on uh Buddhism because the other books I got on her like you know translation of the Pali Canon or you know, the Buddhist scriptures, which was written in the 60s, which is like a compilation of Mahayana and Hinayana Buddhism um, and like the historical stuff and all these was too, too heavy for us. So I got her, you know, 101 basics of Buddhism, Buddhism 101, the basics, which she really liked. Um, <clears throat> again, I don't see studying other religions as a threat at all. If anything, it, it, um, it, I don't know, it, it, uh, it helps, like, my view of reality, basically. Um, I need to study a lot more of Zoroastrianism. I really love Zoroastrianism. I think Zoroastrian, Zoroaster was definitely a pre-Christ Christian, and maybe Zoroastrianism was probably more of a, pre-Christ Christians than the ancient Israelites were. Now that is a view that might get me in trouble. Here's another view that's going to get me in trouble, and you did not ask about it. Um, and I do not, I usually do, don't say this. Um, and, uh, but, uh, while I don't think uh, reincarnation is the norm, 
and I would never want to be reincarnated. Unfortunately, um, I think there's too much uh, information and evidence, not proof, not proof. Evidence is not proof. There's, at least for me, there's too much evidence to say that reincarnation doesn't happen sometimes. Now that, that can land me into a lot of hot water with orthodoxy. That, that is something where, um, that goes beyond theologomena. Um, actually, I should probably discuss that with, uh, with, um, some elders and priests that I trust. Uh, the current parish priest that I go to, I don't trust him one bit. Can't wait till he leaves. But, um, yeah. Also, I don't see i mean salvation literally means like healing um the orthodox orthodoxy believes that there's going to be a lot more people in let's call it heaven um than the protestants or the catholics believe like it's it's not it doesn't clash with or the eastern orthodox church at all if the vast majority of mankind ends up, you know, in paradise with God or heaven or whatever you want to call it, the kingdom. Uh, but the, uh, the views of heaven and hell, like again, hell is, they, they took Tartaros, Gehenna, Sheol, and Hades, as well as a bunch of other descriptions and they they, tra they first of all they translated all of, all four of those words as hell, which was an, again a Nordic word, and then they associated a lot of these things like the worm that doesn't die and you know all that you know stuff, which yeah that that could be referring to uh, the negative aspect of the afterlife, but there's also a concept in orthodoxy of of paradise and prison basically, um, and this is pre-resurrection, so there's some dream type state after you die before the general resurrection where i don't know souls reside or whatever and they're not exactly unconscious um in fact they're many see them as more aware than people in living on earth right um so yeah, heaven and hell. It's, the the concepts that come to mind for the Westerner absolutely don't. There, there, there's not even a, they don't translate into orthodoxy. There's no equal. Like there's the like, um, there will be some orthodoxy. Yeah, we believe in hell, but it's okay. You're using the English word for negative afterlife, but it's wildly different than um, than portrayed by other forms of Christianity. It's, it's almost closer to Islam. It's weird because it's the Orthodox expect that some people will get out of hell. It's not necessarily eternal. And there is a belief of, of that is not that is heretical. It's weird. It's heretical, but it does not damage your salvation. It's strange. The, of an eventual, um, eventual universal salvation. Now, again, there's going to be a lot of Protestants and Catholics that are going to scream at me and be like, that's evil. That's pagan. Again, this is not, this cannot be preached, but if you privately believe it, that eventually, you know, in eternity, you know, in the beyond, after the last day, every soul will eventually turn towards the love of God. That that's not um, a belief that will hurt your chances at, you know, like reunion with God. Um, because it's out of love. You're, it's like an error out of love. You're, you're, you're committing an error in the correct direction, basically. And uh, also, um, even the 
people who say that also kind of wink and say, let's hope that happens, you know? Um, but I think the Orthodox Church would say the only two people we can know that are in hell are, what, Satan and Arius? And Arius, I think you're kind of going too far. I, I don't know. I, I have sympathy for Arius. I know that sounds strange. And I'm talking about Arius of um, the guy at the Council of Nicaea um, who uh, said Jesus was created, you know, and not of, not of one substance with the Father. It was only him and Eusebius of Nicomedia, not Eusebius of Caesarea, that voted against and the I, the uh, homo usius and wanted to inject the iota of homo oiusius and then the other 300 voted for homo usius that's where we get the ver that's where we get the, the saying it doesn't make one iota of difference because that iota actually was either meant of same substance or of like substance of same substance 300 voted for that and then two voted like substance Arius and Eusebius of Nicomedia and those who would follow Arius were known as Arians this has nothing to do with um people from Iran or um the what was what's now called the Indo-European um people or uh, racial group or ethnic group, nor does it have anything to do with um, uh, uh, mid-century Germans misunderstanding and misuse of the term to try to refer to blonde hair, blue-eyed Germans. Um, this is Aria, Arius and Arians with Arianism, which is... Um, which is in opposition to Catholicism, which after the Council of Nicaea, funny enough, there's a period known as Athanasius Contramundo, which is Athanasius against the world, because the vast majority of bishops, even though they they said, yep, homoousius is the correct thing, Christ is of the same substance as the Father, then turned and followed Arius. And the vast majority of bishops were Arian bishops. And that was like, that went on for decades. And it was just basically Athanasius and a few few of his friends, like St. Nicholas, you know, Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, Smyrna, uh, Spirit on a Corfu, um, and a few other bishops and, uh, and, and parishes that held to the faith. And then eventually, you know, the, uh, the view that the Council of Nicaea came to eventually won out. Um, but there's a shit ton of myths around the Council of Nicaea that had anything to do with the Trinity or the compilation of scripture or deity of Christ or, you know, no, it had to do with uh, the son's relation to the father and what date Pascha would be celebrated on. That's basically it. Um, so, yeah, uh, but to learn about orthodoxy, really, it's, you really have to attend. Um, it's a far more um, practical, uh, practitioner based than it is really in books although there's a lot of books in it there's a lot of there's a lot of heavy like theology and mysticism and stuff like that but it's almost like martial arts you know you can read books on it but you really kind of can't even get get to understand it unless you're like you know going to the going to the gym or dojo and doing your forms or whatever and then sparring or or like swimming you can learn you can read about swimming all, all you want but if you've never been in the water before, never even attempted to swim, it doesn't matter how much you read. So orthodoxy is kind of like that. And I would encourage you just for your own cultural enrichment, just check it out. I'm not trying to convert you. Again, we're not allowed to proselytize. Um, we can evangelize, but we're not, which is, you know, doing good works, um, you know, living Christ-like example or almost you know, to give a Western saint who's not part of the Orthodox Church, like Francis of Assisi, you know, kind to animals, kind to everyone, you know, while, you know, not hiding your Christianity, being like, oh, yeah, I'm Christian. 
Um, but proselytizing, where it, we consider proselytizing to be uh, threats of hell, um, promises of, of money or riches or fame, you know, the prosperity gospel. So, yeah, or, or bribing with bread and stuff like that. Um, that's proselytizing and that's f strictly forbidden, you know, uh, because the response to, oh, you'll go to hell without Christ. How do you know they don't have my mystically have Christ? And who are you to say who goes to hell? You're nobody. So yeah, we do not allow proselytizing, but I would, I would heavily encourage you to check, to just attend an East Orthodox church, it's specifically an, an Arab one, because they're, they're extremely welcoming, um, or even an OCA, because those are the two most welcoming ones in, in the United States, or even even in, you know, e Europe. Well, in Europe, I, I would say Europe or any other Anglophone country besides the United States, uh, the Antiochians, the Syriacs, would be the more most welcoming. Arabs are known for their extreme hospitality. The Russians and the Greeks and the Ukrainians might be not good ones to visit at this point. But I really like all your questions. And I just have to, like these last ones, I kind of just have to agree with your criticism of me. Because I don't like these shitty answers I gave. They're, they're just, they were just not, not ones. I, I, I'm... I'm a fuck ton smarter than that and not as in a lot and not lazy like that. I, I don't know why I, I brush those off like that. So, um, again, if you have any more questions, be very happy to answer them for you. And I'd actually love to have a conversation with you. You sound like a very smart guy. Um, an actual truth seeker, not just a skeptic trying to prove somebody wrong, but no, yeah, I really deeply appreciate these questions. Peace to you, and uh, it's 10 more days of Christmas, and uh, I hope you have a very um, fruitful and blessed uh, uh, Christmas season. Peace to you.